Thing. Order! Oh, order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Drinking alcohol three or four times a week could significantly protect against developing diabetes. That's the verdict of a new Danish study of more than 70,000 people. For men, drinking alcohol three or four times a week was associated with a 27% lower risk of developing diabetes than abstaining. For women, the risk was 32% lower, with wine having the biggest effect due to chemical compounds that help balance blood sugar. But consuming gin or other spirits every day increased the risk of diabetes in women by 83%. I suppose it would be kind of nice for the general public to think that they can nip out and get a bottle of fizz or a Chateau Pap de Neuf to try and reduce their risk. But the much more evidence-based and proven track record of reducing your risk of developing type 2 diabetes through a healthy lifestyle, which is a balanced diet and more exercise or more physical activity. Well, GP Dr James Gill joins us now from Warwick. How can it be that, that drinking alcohol could reduce your risk of uh, developing type 2 diabetes? Well, ultimately, that's not something that this study has told us anything about, really. It's kind of that we need to look at it the other way around. Why is alcohol a risk factor? Now, we know that alcohol causes problems for people's hearts, it causes problems for people's livers, you know, and can be associated with diabetes. But it's all about moderation. And I think that's what this study today has really brought home. So we all know that an apple a day keeps the doctor away. But it might be that a glass of wine a day is now going to keep diabetes at bay. And it's that same thing, moderation. If you're going to go binge on 20 apples a day, you're probably going to see your GP quite soon with a very upset stomach. The but, same thing is true. But it, it's counterintuitive, though, isn't it? Because alcohol contains a, a large proportion of um, sugar, doesn't it? And, and definitely the study is saying that drinking alcohol three or four times a week was associated with a 27% lower risk of developing diabetes. Absolutely, and I think that goes for what we've seen in terms of the type of alcohol that provided a benefit versus that that didn't. So we know that we've got beer and we've got alcohol in this study, which is shown to have a benefit. So we're thinking it's something to do with the chemicals inside the wine, thinking about the grapes, the flavanols, and things like that in there versus our whiskies and our gins, which if we go back to what we saw with the women there, they had an 83% increased risk using um, spirits compared to the alcohol in the wine, giving that beneficial effect. So what do we think the problem is with, with gin then and other spirits? Well, it's probably the nature of how aggressive it is in the sense that it's been so refined and you've got the concentrate of alcohol in it and you don't have any of the other positive chemicals in it. I mean, we've known for years that there are good things in uh, red wines and things like that, whereas we've never actually, we've never said that there's going to be a health benefit from whiskies, spirits and gin. So what, what should the advice be to people? I mean, some might say that it's a bit, um, well, it's, it's not the best advice to give people to, to drink alcohol more than they already do. Well, again, it's about that moderation. So the study has said that drinking no alcohol, actually, you don't have a benefit there, whereas that small amount of alcohol brings improvements in your risk. And crucially, the amount that's being suggested is less than the maximum recommended daily intake. And it's a part of this a whole global lifestyle change that we need to get people to think about with regard to diabetes, because that's having a massive problem in this country at the moment. We've got 4 million people diagnosed with diabetes, and that's expected over the next 20 years to end up racking £16 billion pounds worth of cost to the NHS. So every little thing that we can find that may give a benefit to a patient is vital that we take hold of it and explain it to people. Finally, it is important to differentiate between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. This is really only referring to type 2, isn't it? Absolutely. Type 2 diabetes is about lifestyle, it's about how you look after yourself, and it's what you put into your body. 
Conversely, type 1, that's an autoimmune thing. That's something that you're probably going to be born with, a propensity to attack your own body. That's not going to be helped in this case. OK, Dr James Gill, thank you very much. Good to speak to you. OK.